The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 8th magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. My goodness, it's uh, great to be back with you. Uh, and uh, hope everyone uh, had a, a great week. I know I did out there. Let's make sure, and a great weekend, of course, let's make sure that you and I do everything we can to have an extraordinary Monday, a great week. I'll do everything that I can here to assist you. Of course, the easiest way for each of us to do that is always to remember that life happens for us, not to us. Nothing could be more true, folks. When you can uh, wrap your head around the mere fact that life happens for us, not to us, it means that you and I can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to throw at us. That's what the role of you and I are, are as traders. We've got to go see what the markets are throwing at us. So as opposed to uh, kicking things off each uh, day, I will be doing the uh, new uh, time slot here of 1 to 2 in the afternoon when the market is quiet, when it's a little bit easier for me to not have to worry so much about multitasking early in the morning. So it's great to be with you. Of course, our call number here is 877-927-6648. I'm grateful for your presence here. I'm here to serve you, and I would love to hear from you. So feel free to go ahead and pick up that phone, dial it in. Of course, internationally, you can reach out to us at 727-445-1044. This is Magnificent Monday. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the uh, Dow trading off 55 points. She's trading at 17,793. S&P down about 10 points, trading at 2,082 and change. NASDAQ composite off 42 points at 5,025. Russell down about 6 bucks right now, trading at 1,255. The DAX closed out down 132 points. The FTSE was off 14 points. Gold's up 4 bucks. It's trading at 1,172. Silver is uh, flat out here. Light sweet crude is off a buck this morning or this afternoon, I should say. Trading out at 58.14. Uh, Unless the contract has changed out here. No, I don't think that's changed. Um, let's go see. I'll lead the charge. The upside out here today, you got Tesla. That's up eight bucks, about three and a quarter percent. Amberella, AMBA, that's up seven percent. Um, uh, Tobira Therapeutics, Sobira Therapeutics, that's up 20 percent uh, as we speak this afternoon. Priceline lead the charge, the downside off 15 bucks. China Biology off uh, 10 bucks, or Biologic, I should say. Uh, Regenerative Pharmaceuticals is off 10. Puma Biotech is off seven. Okay, so where do we begin? Let's take a look at this. Let's go take a look at the, let's start off, let's go look at the um, at the Dow just for the moment here. It's trading at 17,795. Let's change this time frame here to uh, quarterly. Just to, let's, let's do what we can to keep things in perspective. And this perspective is this. We've had a lot of basically nothing. If you take a look at where we began the year, January 2nd, I believe, was the first trading day of the year. We had the Dow open up at 17,823. The Dow right now is trading out at 17,790. What are we talking about? Uh, 30 points or so in a period. This is June, June the 8th out here. So the market is basically, since January 1st, it has done, not, well, I say the market, the Dow has done basically nothing uh, in that time period, what does that mean out here? Well, you know, if you take a look at last quarter's candle, I was a little doji candle out here. We'll have another quarter at the end of this month here at uh, June. Uh, at resistance, those doji candles mean a whole bunch. We're not any up at resistance levels, that's for sure, because there's no resistance on the left-hand side of the chart out here. Uh, if this uh, if this quarter of June ended down, you could say the Japanese would tell you after doji the leaves are falling off the tree out here. But if we just take a look at a quarterly chart, market really hasn't done anything. Hasn't done anything for the bulls. Hasn't done anything for the bears. It's only done something for those people who trade on an intraday basis and trade those ranges out there. Or this is a stock picker's market right now. It's a matter of really going out and trying to find the right stocks if you can, either to go to the long side or to the short side. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, so that's, that's what's going on inside the Dow. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ uh, composites out here. Let's go see what it has done, COMPQ, because it has had some movement out here. In fact, this has been leading the charge. And if we took a look at the quarterly, this is especially in the afternoon here, 
as opposed to having to tell you what's going on in the futures market, if the moves are real or not. In the afternoon, we can just, uh, I think the best thing to do is let's just simply step back and let's put things in perspective out here with regard to what's really going on inside the markets out here. And we'll take a look at both sides of the uh, trade, as we always need to do out here. And if we take a look at the quarterly chart for the NASDAQ Composite, there's nothing bearish. We take a look at a quarterly chart. We can see that off of that March uh, low out here, March of 2009, we can see that price is up above the 1.618 A to B equals CD to the upside out here. What that really says is that the NASDAQ composite wants to move up to the 5543 area. That's what it wants to do longer term. Well, if that's the case, I would say that what the market is doing right now, the NASDAQ is providing us with information out here, that the market's doing nothing more than trying to find its next bottom out there. That the uh, top is really not in in these markets out here. And that's a perspective of what this chart says or what this chart communicates to both you and I. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000 out here. So you can see the composite. You know, I mean, the open, if we just take a look at it, the open basically in January was around uh, 47.60. You're at 50.24 as we speak right now. Not too shabby out here. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. See what it has done. Russell 2000, you know, it's higher. It's probably a couple percent, uh, two, three percent or so. It opened up at uh, 1252. You're trading, no, you're trading at, uh, no, I'm sorry. Well, hold on a minute here. For the quarter, what was the open? 1209. 1209. You're trading at 1254 as we speak right now. It's hit the 1 to 1.272 expansion of its A to B equals CD. Pattern of the upside. Nothing bearish. Uh, you know, this as we speak right now for this quarter, we're basically at a draw, the open for the uh, quarter. So that means the. Uh, uh, April, uh, I don't know what it was. It was April Fool's Day, as a matter of fact. Uh, the open was at 12.50. You're trading at 12.54. So we haven't seen a whole lot of movement inside of the Russell 2000. Let's just take a look at the S&P 500. Then we're going to go take a look at the uh, horizontal trading ranges. We'll go take a look at that to get an idea where the market may be pulling back into. If we take a look at the S&P 500, um, you know, it hasn't done a lot, but there's nothing bearish as we speak. At, when we take a look at the quarterly charts out here, now the quarterly chart says that the S&P wants to get to 22.13. That's your 1 to 1.618, A to B equals C D to the upside. And we know that we've got a measured move of consolidation breakout that uh, has 23.50, 24.50 painted all over the place on that. And that's really what our expectation should be as we speak right now. So back to the, we're stick, going to stick with the longer term charts. So I'm going to switch over here to our horizontal trading ranges. These are really great tools to help you and I understand where price is headed to, where there's support levels and resistance. Now, this is a monthly chart. We were just taking a look at quarterly charts. Uh, we're taking now a look at the uh, monthly chart for the NASDAQ composite. The dash lines out here are really the midpoints of their horizontal trading ranges out here. You see, the markets are going to do one of two, three things out here. They're either going to be trending up, trending down, so they're going to be moving higher, moving lower, or they're going to be moving sideways. In fact, sometimes they're going to be doing at least, uh, well, sideways to higher or sideways to lower out here. Now, in the case of the NASDAQ composite, on its monthly chart out here, there is absolutely, now it's only June 8th, but there's absolutely nothing bearish about, now here's the deal with regard to what the market does for you and I each and every moment of each and every day. And you just got to simply stay within your time frames out here. Look, if you're a day trader, you're not even paying attention to what the uh, monthly charts are doing for the uh, most part out here. But with regard to what the monthly charts are communicating to you and I right now, is they're pulling back to that 5,000 level, 5,007 to be exact, you're trading at 5,023. Price broke up above that level last month the month of uh, May out there. And, yes, we're in that seasonal, unfavorable seasonal cycle out here, you know, the so-called sell in May. And if that's the case, guess what? The market doesn't make its high in May. It doesn't make its high in May. And so that says that what the market is really doing, if you take a look at the trend line out there, shoot, price isn't even close to the uh, trend lines out there that began back in uh, 2009, as well as the uh, trend line that began back in 2011. So all of that is intact out here. If, in fact, we're going to see a deeper retracement, a, a deeper pullback here, the real level of support to be looking at inside the NASDAQ composite is going to be 4,600. But first, it's got to break through 5,007.73 out there. That's what's going on in its monthly chart. If we go take a look at the Dow, get a feel for what it is also doing here with regard to its horizontal trading ranges what we know about the Dow as the trend lines from March of 2009 from 2011 they're intact out here we can see the resistance level that horizontal trading range boundary line 18,226 we have not seen price uh, close above that uh, level 
If price does pull back, I would be looking for the trend line as my first level of support out here. And that's the trend line, the shorter term trend line. I'm talking shorter term. I'm only going back to 2011. But if you take your monthly chart, you take the low from that 2011 time frame here. That price point, by the way, is um, 10,404 down to the low that took place here in the month of November of 2012. And that's at 12,471. That's going to set up your trend line. That is where the October 2014 Ebola scheme scare moved down into it bounced right off of that i would expect that trend line to hold out here uh, the month of uh, june that would actually take it down to about 17,249 if in fact it can really get the energy to move on down to that level if we take a look at the uh, s p 500 the spx let's go take a look at what it's doing with regard to its horizontal trading ranges again we are in an up trending market out here nothing there are no signals there are no signals on the quarterly there's no signals on the monthly charts as we speak right now that suggests that what we're doing is anything other than just simply a normal little pullback out here we'll go take a look at volumes inside of the uh, etf structures out here as well as we'll take a look at the currency pairs we'll look at the liquidity gauges because quite frankly liquidity gauges are saying we are flush with dollars with cash out here and that cash is just looking for the time to be able to jump on in and buy this next bottom that's what the markets are doing out here if we take a look at the s p 500 on the monthly charts out here you can see that it's trading right at that 2076 uh, type area that happens to be the midpoint of its monthly horizontal trading ranges even if price pulls back we won't know if there's any kind of change in trend until we see a test of that trend line that takes you back into the 2011 time frame that's the white uh, diagonal line going across my screen out here uh, this month is if you saw a pullback, basically, we take it back to 1969. I'm not talking the year. I'm talking the uh, price point out there. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Let's go see what it is doing. And then we'll go take a look at the uh, volume inside the ETFs, get a better feel out here. But we got to take, we got to step step back. And we always have to really keep things in perspective out here. And the first perspective is what is going on when we take a look at the long-term time frames out here. In the case of Russell 2000, you know, we looked at it on a quarterly basis. There wasn't anything bearish there. Here's the monthly chart out here. The only bearish reversal signal that we've got is from April Fool's. April, uh, not April Fool's Day, but from April, the month of April out here. That says 1278.62 is your area of resistance. Happens to be the midpoint of that horizontal trading range that takes you up into 1369. That 1369 will get met once we see a close about 1278.62. As we speak, since I was gone last week, what we have not seen take place out here, and there's all kinds of talk about the liquidity issues, right, of rising interest rates. If there's really a liquidity issue of rising interest rates out here and the market is going to get spooked, would you answer me this question? Please answer me this question, and we can, uh, you can answer it when we get back from the uh, breakout here. But if we take a look at the Russell 2000, uh, R-U-T, if there's really a liquidity issue, I guess I have to put in the right symbol out here. But if there's really a liquidity issue out here, and there's really scariness that's going on inside the markets out here, how come the Russell 2000 is leading, is not leading on the way down? Hmm, something to think about. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN in that new time slot from 1 to 2 with you each and every day. We'll be back in just a minute. follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 56 points. The S&P is off about uh, 10. So we just to kind of keep things in perspective out here, we started to take a look at some longer-term time frame charts out here to get a feel for what the markets are doing. Now we're going to go ahead and step things back. And what I posed to you as we went into the breakout here is if, you know, in other words, uh, what is it that's really going to drive these uh, markets to the uh, downside out here? Where's the so-called bubble? Uh, you know, and 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 if the markets are really moving lower, and the premise is because interest rates are going to rise, if that's the real premise out here, there'd be real liquidity issues. And one of those places where that liquidity gauge would show up would be inside the Russell 2000, and it ain't there. I shouldn't say it ain't there. It's just simply not there out here. What do I mean by that? Let's go take a look at the daily time frame out here for the Russell 2000. Right now today, inside the IWM, you're uh, down with about uh, 10 million shares. What did it actually do? Well, to this morning, got up, tagged the resistance level of its uh, TAS market profile high out there. That was 125.66. The actual high this, uh, today so far has been 125.62 out there. So tagged in a level of resistance. As I say, in essence, it's really pulled back with 10 million shares. That's after Friday moving higher with 36 million shares. That's after actually cracking through on June 3rd, cracking through that resistance area just slightly of that TAS market profile with 30 million shares. What's the IWM doing? It is not leading the, uh, not leading the charge to the downside out here. 
The NASDAQ composite is not leading things to the downside out here. So the market is not ready to crack. It is not ready to crack just yet out here. These markets are going to move higher. They are going to move higher, uh, whether it's, I can't tell you whether it's uh, which part of June or the early part of July out here, but the markets want to motor on higher. And there is plenty of liquidity out here. But let's just stick with the ETF. So the IWM, what did we have today? Pulling back with light volume, trying to take out resistance of 125.66. Wants to then go ahead and tag that uh, high out here from April 15th, somewhere between 125.92 and 127.13. And then it probably goes ahead and it uh, completes an A to B equals CD to the upside. But we'll take that when, in fact, we see that occur, if, in fact, it does occur. Support inside the IWM uh, down around the 121, 29 type level out here. Let's go take a look at the QQQ ETF off a of buck 16. 12 million shares as we speak to the downside. What is it doing? It's 12 million shares. It's basically coming into a swing point that's got 42 million shares. You know, the market opened at 930. We have been trading for four hours uh, as we speak. There's only two and a half hours left in the uh, trading session out here. So unless there's just going to be volume that explodes out to the downside. Now, the top of that swing point is 107.95. We are at 108.14. Looks to me like we'll probably go ahead and tag that level here today. Now, if we tag it, you close back above that high, which is 107.95. You do it on less than 42 million shares. What is it telling you? It's telling you you can't bust it down. It's also getting back to the 0.618 retracement level out here. There's no volume to the downside inside this market. There are no sellers inside this market. Just slight selling out here, gradual roll out here. The market is not ready to crack the downside. At least it is not as of 1.27 p.m. on June, what is it, say it's June the 8th out here. That doesn't mean that they can't show up three minutes from now. But as we speak right now, we've got to go with the information that we've got. And volume is coming back inside the queues into a swing point with light volume out there. If we go take a look at the spy, what is the spy doing? It's back a buck four with 42 million shares. The spy is trading inside the May 6 swing point. Now that's got 135 million shares. Are you kidding me? You're inside that swing point with what? With light volume. On Friday, you had the spies pull back with 121 million shares. My goodness, we're not going to do, well, I doubt that we're going to do 80 million shares to the downside in the next two and a half hours out there. Hey, anything can happen. But I doubt that we're going to do it. So what are the spies doing? They're pulling back with light bond. They're almost to the 0.786 retracement level, which would be 208.26. Does it have to, does price have to stop there? No. Can easily just simply get back and test that 206.76 level. If we see that test on light volume, which I suspect it will be, because at this stage of the game, that's where we know what's going on inside the markets. That's the extent of the move before you see. If you can't bust them down, what will price do? Try to bust them up and try to. In fact, it will try to bust them up. And not only will it try to, I believe that it will be able to get back above that May 21st high out there. That's what's going on inside of the spies. If we go take a look at the Dow Diamond. So the markets right now, they're just simply retracing. They are providing the next buy opportunity out here. If we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, the swing point it's trading into is May the 6th. 7.5 million shares out there. What has it done today? Nada. Not a darn thing. It's pulled back, most certainly, but with volume of 2.2 million shares. No, look, the test doesn't come in until you test the bottom of that swing point, 177 and a quarter. Uh, that's the uh, next move. Maybe it goes ahead and spikes out down here and test the March 26th uh, level, the top of which is 177.30 out here. But we've got a market that is just simply pulling back with uh, light volume. It's prime. It's getting ready to move on up. And when it moves on up, you might say, well, what is it that's going to fuel the fire? Hey, it's your friend and mine. It's that Euro Japanese yen. We'll go take a look at the currency pairs when we get back from this break. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
authorization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 82 points right now. She's trading 17,767. So I mentioned currency pairs. Let's go see what's going on inside of the currency market out here. Where is the liquidity coming from? Well, it's coming from your friend and mine, the Euro Japanese yen. If you are a bear, this is not what you want to see out here. Now, in the case of the Euro Japanese yen, this is the currency pair that uh, tracks. It's a liquidity gauge inside the market. It tracks the uh, market better than any other currency pair. When you see a divergence, so who wins this battle here? It is currencies. It's really all about currencies. Now, we take a look at the Euro-Japanese yen three trading sessions ago, back here on June the 4th. We actually did see a bearish signal out here. We saw the shooting star. A shooting star is the opposite of the hammer candle. And that says, and we take a look at the price as we're speaking right now, price today, tomorrow is going to try to test that high, that resistance level out there, 141.05. Remember the expression when you've got a hammer candle out here and you see price close, close below a hammer candle. The expression is if you're long, you're wrong. 
Well, just the opposite. Well, it's it's really the exact opposite of the case of the shooting uh, star candle. If you're short, you're wrong out there. Not very good rhyme, uh, but maybe somebody can come up with a rhyme out there with regard to the shooting star. So if we see the Euro Japanese yen close above 141.05, that will not be good news for the sellers inside the market because it just says that the ammunition is being loaded up for the market to move higher. And if, if we've got an A to B equal C to the upside also that is underway inside this Euro Japanese Japanese yen. It's a doozy out here as well. If we take a look at the A point, it's down here at April the 14th. That's your A point. Your B point is out here on May 18th. Your C point, just a shallow retracement into May 26th. A point uh, 382 was really 35.5% out there. Guess what? That says the Euro Japanese yen wants to head up to 143.97, 146.92. That's where it's on its uh, way to. Eventually, the market will uh, get the uh, signal and it will start to catch up directionally to what's going on inside of this currency pair. So as we're taking a look at currencies, let's go take a look at the euro versus the U.S. dollar index out here. What it is doing, you know, if we pull this back, what it's been trying to do for the last uh, month or so, it's been trying to break through this descending price channel. So if you're watching us on Tiger TV, I hope that you are. Just take a look at that descending price channel out here. That's the yellow line going across my screen. And we can see that price broke above that, turned out to be a false breakout. That was back on the trading days of uh, May 15th and May uh, 14th out there. Turned out it was a false breakout. We knew that when price came back in on May 19th. What it actually did with the euro did was it made a 0.618 retracement slightly lower than that right now today we are seeing the euro break above that descending price channel it too has that uh a shooting star candle and as uh danny in the uh, den said hey if you're short abort i like that i just got to remember that very good very good danny out there and if we take a look at the uh, resistance level for june 4th inside the euro versus the u.s dollar you're looking at a price point of 113.80 1.138 and if you see it close above that price is going to head to 114.66 and then it too may be setting up an a to b equals cd to the upside out here so as the uh, currency pair as the euro moves higher out here guess what's going to happen to the u.s dollar index it ought to get what weaker Right, so it ought to pull back. If you take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it's down 92 cents as we speak right now, trading out around 95.43. I've got a 10-minute delay inside of the U.S. dollar index out there. If we go take a look at what's going on inside the Japanese yen, Japanese yen is uh, back trading out at 124.09. Uh, this thing uh, continues to motor on higher. No reversal signal. In fact, what we saw take place on Friday was we saw any kind of a reversal pattern, a resistance level get taken out, and it was taken out with conviction. And that was a little key reversal session that took place on June 2nd. Once you saw price close above 125.05, it said it wanted to take it to the next level. Well, in the case of the currency pair, that next level is 126.18. That's where price is eventually headed to. And then you'd have to say, after it does its work and gets up to that level, you're probably looking at 128.31 inside of the U.S. dollar Japanese yen currency pair. So, with the U.S. dollar index pulling back out here, what's going on inside the metals complex? Well, let's go take a look at Goldilocks. You've got gold trading up five bucks, trading out at eleven seventy-two. If we take a look at it, it's not doing much out here. In fact, gold is likely going to get back and it's going to test the uh, swing point of the March seventeenth area, somewhere between eleven forty-three to eleven fifty-nine. It's really been trading sideways. I'd have to say, been trading sideways since about March the second uh, out here. In between the levels of about 12.24 to 11.59. So you're looking at about an 80-point, 80 85-point move or so uh, consolidation that it's uh, traveling in, you know, the U.S. dollar. In. And so I, I, I don't get too caught up into the correlation any longer, at least at this stage of the game, between the uh, U.S. dollar <clears throat> and uh, gold. I'd say you're better off take a look what's going on with regard to gold priced in euros and gold priced in U.S. dollars. If I could show you that chart, <clears throat> excuse me, I would. I can't. What we know about gold, just trading in a, a sideways uh, consolidation out here. That's all that it is doing. If we go take a look at uh, silver, you got silver trading out at 1595 out here. What is it doing? It's trading below its 0.786 retracement off of that nice move. So it's really pulling back into a breakout area. And by breakout, we're taking a look at the trading session, the trading day from April 27. You're trading inside that. You're actually testing the uh, swing point from April 24th as we speak right now. That swing point high is 1592. You've been as low on Friday. You got down to uh, 1592. So you got down, you tested it. You're trading at 1595 right now. 
no bullish reversal signal here. That says that price probably gets back and tests the 1559 area before it releases any additional information to you or I. If we go take a look at light sweet crude, you got light sweet crude trading back a buck right now, trading out at $58 and change. What is light sweet crude doing out here? really just gets it's just consolidating up at these highs it's just coiling up it's just coiling up getting ready to what it looks like to me is probably to move higher out here we've only seen a 0.382 retracement from the low to the high out here that high was on the trading day of may 6th the low out here that we're looking at is the may march 18th level so it's only done a 0.382 retracement and it's just simply worked its way self sideways by working off an overbought ish type by condition out there when you do that that's the most bullish thing that anything can do work its way sideways to work off an overbought condition. That takes care of the. Well, let's take a look at natural gas. Natural gas is up uh, 10 cents as we speak right now. Let's go see what it is uh, doing out here. We know natural gas makes its uh, makes its high, I believe, seasonally sometime in the uh, June time frame, if I am not mistaken, out here. So you know, in this case, maybe that uh, really came early back here on May 19th as it made the high out there, and that was when it got to the 315 level. Now we've seen it pull all the way back and make a 100% move of a move by getting back to lows here from April 27th. Today is the first bullish sign that you've seen off of that uh, bottom. Off of the bottom, what I mean by bottom is that uh, retest of that April 27th level. This says a natural gas ought to go ahead and at least make its way up to the $2.79 area. You get above that, then you're looking at natural gas making a retracement at least of this last move down. And that says that you get up into the $2.92 area. And that is on the current natural gas contract out here. Let's take a look at some things that are moving and grooving in the marketplace the upside to the downside. Let's go take a look at Priceline. PCLN is the uh, ticker symbol. That's trading now 15 bucks down about 1% as we speak. Well, we know about Priceline just trading also in a version of a consolidation. And that's between that gap up, that gap up, which was very significant on the trading day of February 20th. When I say significant, I'm really referring to uh, price out. I just say the 20th, I meant the 19th. 2.6 million shares to the upside. That really set up this little sideways consolidation type move out here the bottom which is 1129.98 it's pulling back into this last little sign of strength out here which was june 2nd it had a million shares the upside pulling back with 335,000 shares out here and just another piece of the puzzle that this market does not have any momentum to the downside from a volume perspective that's at least what priceline is showing us we've got apple out there right doing a, a users conference Apple's back a dollar thirty-seven with thirty-one million shares. What is it trading into? You know, a lot of sideways action right now, testing its market profile low. We'll see if that area can hold that support. That's one twenty-seven oh four. The swing point that it uh, most recently made at these lows out here was on May the sixth. That had seventy-two million shares, thirty-one million shares. It's got to do another thirty million shares today just to equal. That uh, swing point, the top of that swing for May uh, 6, by the way, was 126.75. The low so far today has been 126.83. We don't have a test, but in the case of Apple, it's just simply pulling back with light volume as well. Of course, that's the pictures of the QQQ ETF when we took a look at what was going on there. Let's look at the Regenerant Pharmaceuticals out here, REGN, pulling back with uh, about 550,000 shares out here, down 13 bucks as we speak. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals, nice day. Of of strength on uh, Friday, June 5th, uh, 1.2 million shares. The upside, I guess, given back 50% of those uh, gains, maybe a little bit more than 50% of those gains, but yet it is pulling back with, you know, light volume, 557,000 shares as we speak. In the case of Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, let's look at that A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's go take a look at that price projection, which gives you a price projection somewhere around. So it's already done the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside, unless the bears show up and create a bearish reversal signal which today right now as we speak a little dark cloud cover out here uh, but you've got to get follow through and at this case here at this stage of the uh, game regenerative pharmaceuticals unless it closes below 496.73 wants to move up to 563.11 that's what its ticker symbol is let's go take a look at tesla see what tesla is doing two and a half percent of the upside up six bucks out here tesla moving higher moving above its most recent swing point which was may 29th that had 3.7 million shares you got 3.8 million shares to the upside where Tesla headed to? Well, let's go take a look. 
In the case of Tesla, right now today, uh, we know that Tesla bro broke its trend. That was a trend line that took you back from the uh, swing point out here from the trading day of September the uh, 4th, that high. Then the next uh, swing point was the high from November 18th out here. That was at 259.99. We saw a price break through that. Now you've got this A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. Says that price is going to move up into the 268.65 level. That's the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD. To the upside, oftentimes that's where you see the change in trend take place out here. You've also got a downdraft inside of a Tesla, a little bit of an open window, and that says that resistance really inside of Tesla, TSLA, is at the 274.40. To the uh, and there was volume there by the way of 16 million shares today you're doing 3.8 you're moving into that level with uh, light volume out here expect the resistance line to be the 270 well let's see what is it 274.40 uh, down to the uh, 27 um, what did I say here two yeah, 274.40 to the 277 even Stephen level. If we see a close of up 277, those highs will get tested again at the 291 area. But Tesla looking pretty good from a volume perspective today. You've got Ambarella, A-M-B-A -A is the Turkish symbol. That's up a little over 5% of 5 bucks. It's a daily chart that we're taking a look at. It's got some nice volume in it. 4.4 million shares out here. This is at all-time highs. Continues to move up uh, higher out here. It's got some nice volume behind today's move out here. I don't see anything bearish about Am Barella. A-M-B-A. -A. Uh, let's see. What else can we uh, look at here? Let's go take a look at... So we look, took a look at the ETF structure. We took a look at the uh, currency pairs out there. You know, yeah, price is pulling back. Well, well let's go take a look at the uh, NASDAQ. Let's go take a look at the 120-minute uh, time frame out here. What we do know about the NASDAQ is this. It was trading in about an 80-point consolidation. That was between the 4460 level to uh, 4540 or so. So somewhere right around there. We have broken down below that. Pretty good chance when we take a look at the NQ out here that what, what it wants to do is motor lower, probably into the bottom of this uh, descending price channel out here. Not until we see price take out the top of that descending price channel will we see any kind of breakout for prices to move higher out here. So you do have on the shorter term time frame charts and you've always got to keep things in perspective. We took a look at longer term charts when we began the uh, show here today. Now we've worked our way all the way back to a, a two-hour chart. Uh, and uh, that says that once you broke through the 4460 area, you just simply subtract 80 points. So that would be what? That would be about 4320 or so where you should see a price move. Is that right? Uh, 4460 minus 60 is 40. No, that would be 4380. Uh, so if I get my math right, yeah, about 4380 uh, is likely the price objective for the NQ out there. So with regard to the theory that Stevo has that the market is just really trying to find its next bottom out here, its next viable bottom out here, that doesn't mean that prices can't move lower. You just need to be able to stay and trade within your time frames out here. But that's what's going on inside of the two-hour chart for the NASDAQ. If we go take a look at what's going on inside some of the ETF sectors, uh, the sectors for the S&P 500. Let's go start off and take a look at the number one sector, the XLK, see what it is doing. Now, its most recent swing point took place here on May 6th, 9 8 million shares. What have you done today? Light volume. You're up at about 5 million shares as we speak right now. Now, this could uh, get uh, get similar type volume. I can see that taking place for sure. Uh, but the bottom of that uh, session needs to be tested May 6th out here. That's at about 41.86 out there. Um, that's what's going on inside of the XLK. If we go take a look at what's going on inside of the XLF out here, the financial sector, that's back 9 pennies, 12.5 million shares. Really not doing a whole heck of a lot out here. Um, uh, you know, support inside XLF, pretty simple. It's 24.52 out here. Uh, if that area holds as support, you just simply got a little sideways trading range that is going on inside of the financial sector for the S&P 500, which is down 67 points as we speak right now. The s and is off 11, Composites off 48, Russell 2000 down 7.5 points. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back.
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 70 25% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 65. S&P is down 11. Composites off 48. Russell 2000 down uh, 7 points as we speak. We take a look at the uh, summation index out here for the uh, three indices that we uh, follow. Uh, you've got all of them really below. Well, you've got all of them below the zero line. When they're below the zero line, it tells you that the uh, sellers are the ones that are in control. Now, in the case of the uh, Dow out here, just to support the... Uh, so the, we, we took a look at the volume perspective as far as what was going on across the for index ETFs out there. Unless volume decides to explode out of, out of um, and I can't say nowhere, but just simply decides to uh, explode out, 
and then it's a different story. But right now, you got volume pulling back. Let's take a look at the uh, Dow specifically. Let's start here. And when the uh, Dow, when its price actually gets down around the minus two and a half uh, level to lower than that, that's where we've seen all of these other bottoms take place inside the market. I've got a little problem here with my uh, cursor. Sorry about that. But what we can see is price is pulling back. It's pulling back into the uh, swing point here from May the uh, 6th. The market hasn't really gone anywhere. As we took a look at from uh, January 2nd on, we're basically within you know, 50 uh, points or so of uh, that uh, session. You've got price uh, pulling back into the oversold level of its uh, price oscillator out here. What you ought to be doing is, as opposed to thinking about where is it that I'm going to jump on the short train out here, what you ought to be doing is looking for where is it that you're going to go ahead and take the long position of the market and go ahead and ride the markets up into new highs out here, most likely into new all-time highs before we really start to see the summer selling season kick in. It's too early. It's not here just yet. Yet. We've got all the signals. You've got the currency pairs moving higher. You've got price moving back with light volume. You're moving into oversold territories inside of the uh, inside of the uh, Dow, inside of the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Take a look at it. It, when it gets down to that minus 200 level, then really, I'm not uh, sharing anything new with you. Um, I think I had a call, let's see, it was probably now two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and the question was, you know, if the market's going to move lower, you know, what, where would it be that you would start to take? A look at uh, getting out of those positions and moving to the upside out here. And uh, my specific statement was, well, when the New York Stock Exchange gets down to that minus 200 area. Well, as we speak right now, you take a look at that price oscillator, you're at minus 165. So it's just got a little bit ways, a little bit of a ways to go out here, but really not much in the way of a price damage. You're at 10,926. The highs out here that were formed were at 11,254. That's not a lot of price damage when you take a look at what's going going on inside the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange. And inside the composite, let me tell you, strong like bull is all that we, and there is no bull about that. It is strong like bull out here. Price oscillator continues to fluctuate day to day here between getting above the uh, zero line, below the zero line. Still got a rising uh, trend uh, line out here. So it's strong like bull. And when the market does get ready to take off, that's where you want to be positioned. Inside of the uh, inside of the NDX 100 is uh, would be my uh, take. But you're going to get a nice trampling effect inside the uh, Dow as well well out there. Well, hey, I guess I gave it away. You ought to be looking at the uh, small caps out here, right? They're not cracking. Uh, they at least have not cracked as we speak right yet, just yet. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to move topside out here. With regard to the uh, markets, the Dow is off 64. The S&P is down uh, 10. Uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, joining me here uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'll get used to this uh, time frame, this new uh, time slot. Of course, you can catch the uh, show by listening to the archive. It's still on Channel 9 out there. For those of you that would like to get my morning call, you know the call that I've been giving you for years here by doing that 9 to 11 slot. Uh, TFNN sent an email out to uh, folks saying uh, you can get the uh, newsletter service. Mastering Probability, you can uh, do that. Uh, you got to do it this week here. you got a uh, free trial on that. So come on over to the homepage at TFNN.com. Stay tuned. Our man, David White, Polar, is going to be up uh, next. So have a great Monday, folks. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon. Take care. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.